Okay, so good morning. Uh, how's your day today? I hope that you're just going fine, even just you're at home. So as usual, we have to continue our lessons so that we will be learning more and more regarding our subject in personal identification. In the last session, I have uh, told you about uh, the Henry system classification and the different uh, divisions of which you were able to learn the rules and how to establish it. So at this point in time, we will now proceed with APIS. So if you happen to see this kind of equipment and you happen to see the four letter acronym, what comes to your mind? So APIS stands for Automated Fingerprint Identification System. So accordingly, we have here the definition of which this is a biometric identification methodology that uses digital imaging technology to obtain, store, and analyze fingerprint data. So that is why we have this equipment. So of course, it's digital using the te computer technology and other attachment. So you would see here that you could uh, have or you would undertake the visualization of the 10 fingerprints, the rolled impression, and the plain impression. So uh, you might be thinking that this is uh, difficult. And of course, it is really difficult. But as you go through, especially when you will be in the PNP service and you might be assigned in some laboratory, then you would have chance of uh, uh, performing this kind of job or work. So we continue class. And aside from that, this APIS is a computer system that processes and searches Latin fingerprints through a 10 print database. So all 10 fingers are being considered and a searchable database of finger and palm prints records used to verify the identity of users of systems or of criminals or to link unsolved crimes. So uh, we have to consider now that the commission of crime is uh, becoming high tech. So we have to be high tech also when it comes to the uh, investigation process and to the detection of a possible culprit or possible offender who had committed such crime. So uh, this is very relevant in the fingerprint aspect of which we will be using APIS. Why is it that I had still included this in our subject? Even though we cannot perform this in the laboratory or we do not have such machine, then at least we know what is all about the APIS and its relevance in the crime detection and investigation, especially in the aspect of fingerprint examination. Of course, we mainly give emphasis in uh, giving or establishing the identity of a person who had been involved in crime. So we have here also class, uh, first terminology. Okay. So we have here 10 print inquiry, 10 print, referring to the 10 fingers, the 10 prints here. So it is a search, it is a way of searching a set of no fingerprints against the records of an existing 10 print database. There may be uh, uh, stored uh, fingerprints in there of which we could probably search that could match to the prints that we have uh, collected or gathered or at the same time recorded. So aside from that, in number two, we have what we call latent inquiry. So search a latent print from a crime scene against a 10 print database. So our basis in here, if there are 10 print uh, database or records in the machine in the APIS, we could probably have a search 
in relation for a latent print that we might uh, that we have gathered at the crime scene. So it's a manner of matching it. Okay. Then we have number three, latent to latent inquiry or LLI. So search a latent print from a crime scene against the record of existing unsolved crimes database. So of course, if possible, maybe the person is a recidivist, then there could be possibility of much from a previous crimes or record that is already available in the database. Okay, and number four, we have the so-called 10 print to Latin inquiry or known as TLI. A search a new 10 print against the record of existing unsolved crimes database. So these are the different aspects that could be done in the APIS or what we call automated fingerprint identification system. And with the use of technology, so we could say that the investigation process being done by police officers or investigators is scientific. And it also goes with the upgrading of technology so that they could also cope up with the modernity that uh, is happening in our locality. So functions of APIS. You would see in here 10 print inquiry, wherein this inquiry compares the 10 print of an arrested suspect. So if you happen to arrest a person, you will compare it, okay, with the fingerprints of criminals and file to verify the identity and criminal history of the suspect. You might be thinking that this person who had been arrested had also a previous case, so you can do this. So that is what we call 10 print inquiry. So these are the processes. If you happen to arrest the person, you have to get the suspect standard 10 print, you record it, and then you, with the use of APIS, you can now have the processing, the 10 print database, you have to take a look now or refer into the APIS. And we also have here fingerprint matching processor. So processing takes place in the machine. And if they happen to identify that he has previous records, okay, so the person might be thinking, gosh, how did they know my true identity and my criminal history? So it's because of the database that are that is present or stored in here. So of which if it is proven, then suspect identity and criminal history, of course, you expect that he will be put behind bars for detention and the preparation of charges. So that is an 10 print. So in Latin, this inquiry compares a Latin print from a crime scene with the fingerprint that are stored in the database to identify the perpetrator of the crime. So that is why the SOCO are always uh, collecting Latin prints at the crime scene. Then they would uh, compare it if there is a match that are present in the database. So the Latin print will be obtained at the crime scene. Then 10 print database in here is uh, being stored. And there will again be the processing for the purpose of matching. Okay, they, they would identify if there is a match. Okay, again, the suspect would say, oh, I got caught, how did they know? So again, because of the uh, help of the APIS that is being manned by expert in the fingerprint workstation. So again, we proceed with another slide. So offense inquiry, or known as PLI, then we have here 
the inquiry compares the 10 print of offender with Latin prints and file from unsolved crimes to see if the suspect committed previous offenses. So again, they will determine if this person had committed the uh, offenses before, then they would again process the 10 print and for purposes of a match. Okay, so of course, they will be able to determine if he has been into the commission of crime or has a previous record. Then we also have serial crimes, or it would refer to our LLI, the terminologies that we discussed or present a while back. So this inquiry compares a Latin print from a crime scene with Latin prints and file from unsolved crimes to see if the same person has committed other crimes. So unsolved crimes, they would rely on that. Again, they would take the Latin print from the crime scene. Processing takes place at the fingerprint workstation. And of course, this will be the reaction. Oh, I see. Crime X and Y are committed by the same guy. Let's cut him at his next move. So this is how APIS works. Again, APIS stands for Automated Fingerprint Identification System. So this was also discussed a while back. So usually in if a person would go to a certain uh, office special, for example, in BI, if there are matches from their database as to his fingerprints that was uh, collected, they would always uh, tell that there is a hit on your name. So the word hit, this is very common actually. Oh, my hit ang pangalan mo, bakit kaya? Baka meron kang kaso na hindi mo na settle noon. Meron kang record. So, they could not issue immediately your NBI clearance, isn't it? So HIT is a term used if the findings of an APIS examiner or operator match the search print and the file print in the database. So that really happens. And uh, for example, if you have also the same uh, names with other person, it may also effect. So you could probably be given a hit in your name. So this is a very common terminology that we usually hear from NBI or in any agency that has something to do with identification. Okay, so that is all about our APIS. Again, this is your facilitator, your humble professor, and uh, saying that I hope you have learned something in uh, a short while and keep studying, keep going on and work on with your module. I hope that we could have more for the next session. Thank you and have a good day.